All right, Debbie, whenever you're ready to go, we're ready to go. Okay, good morning, and it's Thursday, and you guys know I get so excited about Thursdays. I am Elder Debbie Thomas at Bethesda Presbyterian Church, and it is just my honor and privilege to do this uh, lesson on Job with you. This is, um, we call it part devotion and part uh, Bible study. So today we're going to be dealing with Job in crises. Job is now in crises. And Job has, we have not even gone to the second verse of Job. All of these things are happening within the first chapter of Job, first and second chapter. I haven't gotten any further than that. And you know, whenever we tell a story, you always, who, it's, it's five questions you answer, who, what, where, when, and why. And when we're talking about the word of God, the why is always because it is the will of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for all that are hearing my voice and will hear it later on. Let my words be coming from you so that I can bring the message exactly as you want it presented. Let us learn something from the life of Job that we can use right now in these times in 2020. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All of this started with a conversation between God and Satan. God said, when Satan told him that he had been just going about to and from the earth, he said, have you considered my servant Job? And as I was listening to these words, and I, I, I say them all the time when I'm studying, I wanted to say that God in our vernacular of today threw Job under the bus. We know about that throwing people under the bus issue because a lot of times we say things about people to other people and they will turn around and say that, why did you say that? You threw me under the bus. I want to say at that time when God said, have you considered my servant Job, that God was bragging on Job. And why was he bragging on him? Because he had watched him and God wrote a resume for Job. We know what a resume is. It tells about your past experiences and it tells how you will be good in that company that you're trying to get that job with. So now Job, J-O-B, is getting a J-O-B job because he is going to have to confront Satan and God is giving him the greatest recommendation he could ever give. He said, there is none on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Notice he said, fears God and not as God saying, fears me. He fears who I am. He fears what I am. He knows about my creation. He knows that the wealth that he has came from me. And so therefore, have you considered him he is blameless and upright and shuns evil. And if you think about it, he will shun you, Satan, because you are evil. So now it's something that the kids say. Satan had what's called a clapback or a comeback. If you're on the internet and somebody says something about you and you come back at them, they say, oh, that was a clapback. And so now Satan has a clapback for God. He says, does Job fear God for nothing? I mean, he really has a reason to fear you. And he says, have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he possesses? Just like Job, we have a hedge of protection around us for everything that we have, our children, our lives, our finances, our health, our wealth. Everything comes from God. He is the one that protects us, loves us, cares for us, and can manipulate our situation any way he chooses because he's God and he's in control. 
So now he says, you have a hedge of protection around him and his household and everything he possesses. And we did go with, he was a man of great wealth. So he possessed a lot. And then if that's not enough, he broke it down further. He says, you have possessed, you have blessed the works of his hands so that his flocks and his herds are spread throughout the land. We talked about how much land it was needed for those 11,500 herd and all of the workers. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. Curse you to your face. Well, for God, that sounds like a challenge. Okay, I'm telling you about this man, upright, shunning evil. You're telling me that the only reason why he loves me is because what I have given to him or allowed him to have? Let's have a contest. Let's see what will happen when you do whatever you want to do to Job. Very well then, everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself, do not lay a finger. This is God granting permission to Satan to harm Job and shoot your best shot, Satan. That's what God is saying in the vernacular of today. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Instantly, he has his assignment now and he is going on his assignment. Satan telling God what he and Job's relationship was made God say, go ahead. I am taking the relationship down. I am letting you come in between me and Job and his things and see what happens. So Job's crisis has a timeline. God has not given Satan a line, but a, a timeline, but he knows how long he's going to let Job stay in crisis. So crisis for you, for Job, for me, for anyone has three parts. There's a BC, before crisis. And in Job's case, he was a man of great faith and wealth. Then there's the IC, the in crisis. Man of tested faith. In crisis, your faith is tested. Your relationship is tested. Everything that you know about God becomes tested. And you have taken these tests before, but they might not have been as harsh as this time is. You have been through things like COVID before, not this thing, but you have been through illnesses, you have been through isolation, you have been where the kids have gone absolutely crazy in your book, not speaking, not doing this, not doing that. You have been in crisis before. And at that point, you have been tested. PC is post-crisis. Man of proven faith and restored wealth. So we've seen Job in BC before crisis, and today, we're going to meet Job in crisis. So in the Bible, it reads, in the first chapters of Job, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing. That's what oxen do. The donkeys were grazing nearby, and the Sabaeans attacked and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. Whenever you're in crisis, trust me, there's going to be somebody to come back and tell you what is wrong with your life right now. Oh, you think you've got it going on? Well, let me tell you, I saw your child and he wasn't looking too good. I saw your father and he was not with your mother. I saw your uncle and he was still drinking. Somebody is going to come and tell you that you are in crisis. Because if they don't, you don't know that you're in crisis and it's just a normal day as usual. Ox is plowing, donkey's grazing, but here comes trouble. Well, what else happened? While this first person was still speaking, another messenger came in and said, the fire of God fell from the heavens and burned up the sheep and the servants. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. 
one messenger bringing bad news about the oxen and the donkeys. Here comes another one that's bringing bad news about the 7,000 sheep, all gone. The fire came down. We know about firestorms like this. They're happening in California all the time. You have people that have lost everything. And those that are in faith will say, God spared our lives. We can rebuild. As long as we have life, we have hope. Others said, I've lost everything. I'm angry at God. Why would he allow this to happen to me? And they become very egotistical about it. They don't praise him. They don't worship him. They don't say, as Job will say at the end, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. What else happened? As that one was speaking, another messenger came and said, the Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword and am, I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. One, two, three. He was wiped out with three messages. A man that owned 11,500 herd of cattle and counting within three messages was wiped completely out. His livelihood, his servants, the only thing he had left was three servants. And those were the ones that came to tell him. But that wasn't all that happened. Because Job's children, who had a habit of going to each other's house for parties, he had seven sons and three daughters, were partying. They were at one of the, one of the sons' houses, and they were drinking and feasting and everything else. So while this third person was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, your sons and your daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house. When suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house, it collapsed on them and they are all dead. I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. All of us have heard about tornadoes, hurricanes, strong winds. Winds can come as a cooling breeze on a hot day, or winds can come as your worst enemy. With 200 mile an hour winds, enough to take a board and throw it through a concrete building. Enough to take a baby sleeping and they end up in a tree but still alive enough to scatter homes, take down churches. God is in control of the winds. God is in control of the fire. God is in control of the insects. God is in control of the microorganisms like COVID. God is in control. And when we as believers, as people of faith, start to understand that our God is in control and that whatever happens to us, he allows it to happen, not to harm or to hurt us, but to build up our faith and belief that if he did it before, he will do it again and again and again. I remember teaching and in teaching, when you have kindergartners, and now a lot of people are home teaching because we don't have any schools open, but you start off with the basics for little children. You start off with them just learning to talk and speak and walk and know who mommy is and know who daddy is and auntie and uncle, and they start identifying their family. Then once they identify their family, you tell them about a family of numbers and a family of, of, of word, letters and then a family of words. And then they start growing and they start speaking and they start writing and reading. And all of a sudden you say, where's the time gone? They're graduating from high school. They're on their way to college. But all along the way of their development, they were given tests, T-E-S-T. They had to have tests to get into college. They had to have tests to get into the right high school. They had to, what is a test? A test is taking what you know and applying it 
to those questions and coming out with the right answer. That's a test. And so when God allows Satan to test us and to harm what we call harm us, he wants to know, are you going to go back on the words that he told you and say, though he slay me, I'm going to trust him. Are you going on the words that says, no matter what happens, he told me he would never leave me or forsake me. So in the middle of my storms, he's there. He is always there. If I have to go in the hospital for COVID, I am a believer that will take COVID a different way and show the doctors and the nurses that it is my God that is giving you the power to get me well. And other people who are not worshipers will see your strength, will see your smile through cancer, will see your smile when you lost a loved one, will see all of that and say, I want what that person has. If God shields us from all of the bad things of the earth, he cannot get a testimony out of you, and therefore he cannot get people who will come over to your God because you are witnessing to his power, even in the midst of every storm. So now what are we going to learn from the last thing after he lost everything? What are we going to learn from Job's final statement right now? He said, naked I came and naked from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, he knew that because he was wealthy, and the Lord has taken away. Now he has nothing, no family, except a few friends that are going to show up, and of course his wife is still there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin in charging God with wrongdoing. Job did not sin in charging God with wrongdoing. What is happening today to those that are out of faith and some of us that are in faith? Why is God doing this to us? Why is COVID? Why can't we go back to church? Why do we have to wear masks? Why do, why do I have to clean myself to death? Why do I have to wash my hands until they're raw? What is God doing to me? Maybe because I made a mistake 20 years ago, God decided to punish me now. That's not true. None of that is true. God is trying to make you a person of great faith. Last week, we talked about all kinds of faith. Oh, ye of little faith. Oh, ye have no faith. Those that have great faith. Those that have questionable and doubting faith. God will continue to let things come so that you will say, I am a child of the Most High God. I am royalty. And whatever my Father has planned and purpose for me, I will accept it knowing that he will withhold from me no good thing. There's a scripture that I want you to just think about, even if you don't um, re remember it. But just think about it today when you hear it. Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good under conditions for them that love the Lord. That's the first condition. And you got to ask yourself, do I love the Lord? And are called according to his purpose. Do you believe that only ministers and chaplains and evangelists are called? No, you are called too according to its purpose. And even if you don't have a platform or a stage or, or you're not preaching to a number of people and you don't have a mega church or you don't even have a mini church, you are called for the purpose of living a solid Christian life in the community where you live. So if you are a senior citizen and you are living in a senior building, it behooves you not to stand there and complain about COVID or anything that's happening to you. It behooves you to say, yes, I might have had the virus, but I am feeling so much better now. I might have needed something to eat, but it was provided. I might have been feeling a certain kind of way, but I read my Bible. I studied. 
and I know that the Lord has me in the hollow of his hands, and he will never leave me. He will never forsake me, and he will never bring harm to me because I know the plans that he has for me, and it's to bring me to a great and expected end. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for everything that comes our way, the good or the bad. We thank you that we are from this day going to look at it as a blessing. And that sounds strange when we hear about family members passing and this one can't see that one and the other. But God knows the road that we take. And we are going to start praising him as Job did for all and not hold him accountable for wrongdoing because God can't sin. God cannot sin and he cannot lie and he does not want to hurt his children. He loves us with an everlasting agape love that no one and nothing, not even ourselves, can stop him from loving us. We're the ones that fall in and out of love and if we start to love like he loves, then we will make it through this and anything else that's coming up in our path. Because guess what? Worst can come. But if our attitude is, I can face tomorrow because I know who holds the future and I know he holds my hand. So Lord, we thank you for this meeting, this little time that we've had together. I pray that its impact just goes and goes and goes and people will tell others about this lesson and get strength and grow faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. No matter what happens, know that you are loved more than you would ever know.